Welcome to EPG Pachala. This is a paper in English Literature and Language. I am Debushri Dattare, Assistant Professor in Comparative Literature at Jadhapur University, Kolkata. We will be dealing with the paper Canadian, Australian and South Pacific Literature. The specific module that I shall be discussing is Canadian Prose, Indigenous Novel. Certain key words that we should discuss are Canadian Literature, the Indigenous Novel, First Nations, Indigeneity and Multiculturalism. Canada is one of the only countries in the world to exercise multiculturalism as an official constitutional policy. Multiculturalism tends to overlook the presence of indigenous nations, which long before the advent of Europeans had lived for millions of years in what eventually we constituted as Canada. Canada's indigenous people are divided linguistically by over 50 mutually unintelligible languages belonging to 12 linguistic stocks. Therefore, Canada is not a new country. It is a country which has an heritage of indigenous communities, indigenous people and indigenous traditions. How do we understand indigeneity? Indigeneity itself is defined as the quality of being born in a region, which is considered as otherness based on preconceived notions of native cultures and people as static in mystifications of land-based ideology. A description of location is certainly not always self-explanatory and perhaps may actually be relegated to the utopian sense of homogeneous time frame. This is precisely what Canadian Aboriginal scholars critique in literatures on, about and of indigenous people, whereby notions of savage, wise old Indian, squaw, Indian princes have been perpetuated through fiction, media and common folklore. One of the first writers that we will deal with is Maria Campbell. Maria Campbell it belongs to the Methi community. She lived a hard life of being forsaken by her husband, having a troubled childhood, but she learned to reiterate her sense of identity through one of the most phenomenal books that we have come across in Indigenous literatures. It is called Half Breed, which was published in 1973, and it recounts the first-hand experiences of her life, the first 33 years of her life, in fact. And it deals with the situation where she says she speaks about the gentle liberalism of Canada, which is actually what she says is a kind of racism. She has been seen by many authors as the mother of us all, as someone who is a figure who showed the way on how to express yourself on paper, the very paper that had alienated so many indigenous communities for centuries together. The next author that we speak about is Janet Armstrong. Janet Armstrong was born in the Penticton Indian Reserve in British Columbia. She is someone who is fortunate to have received a traditional learning from her community and also the so-called Western forms of education. She holds a diploma in Fine Arts from the Okanagan College and a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of Victoria. And she is a very well-known visual artist activist and author. She received the Buffett of Art of Indigenous Leadership in 2003 and had as an honorary doctorate from St. Thomas University. Armstrong has expressed her views on the coherence and collective processes inherent in Okanagan community in her novel Slash and Whispering in the Shadows. She is also the founder and director of the Enoquin School of Learning at Penticton, which which promotes indigenous creativity in all forms. It is one of the most phenomenal expressions of indigenous identity. The next author that we speak about is one of the most prolific writers from the region. Her name is Lee Maraglin, who is born of Salish Cree heritage. She is one of the most important writers that we talk about today from a poor working class neighborhood. She speaks about her mother going to work in the day and earning her education as well. Much of her childhood was spent in the company of her grandparents, one of whom was actor and poet Chief Dan George. Among the most prolific Aboriginal writers in Canada today, Marukle has published more than 10 works 
including fiction, poetry, theory, and other texts. In 2000, she received the J.T. Stewart Voices of Change Award. The next author that we speak about is Beatrice Mosenia. Beatrice Mosenia is a Metis writer. She is known for some of her books which have made history in the world of Canadian writing. One of her first books is In Search of April Raintree, which speaks about two foster children and foster sisters actually, April and Sharon, and their life as Metis children a life of discrimination, a life of identity, a life of solidarity. It speaks of a tradition which goes on from that period to the present. Her next book which came out after that was In the Shadow of Evil, which speaks again about foster children. Monsignor is someone who is also an author of children's book and has been known for her understanding of indigenous aesthetics, particularly Meiti aesthetics. The next poet that we talk about is Ruby Slipperjack, who was, born in, who was born in the Whitewater Lake, Ontario, where she was raised in a traditional world of stories and crafts. Slipperjack attended a residential school and much of her poetry deals with that, much of her work deals with that. And her books have been very important in terms of women's eman emancipation in women's voices within indigenous communities. And one of her novels, Honor the Sun, is one word that makes us understand indigenous women's presence in the community today. Certain indigenous landmarks which are most important is, of course, Half Breed that we just spoke about. Half Breed is a text written by Maria Campbell. It deals with the life of Maria Campbell and her teacher and her sense of understanding French, Cree, English, Irish and other identities that she speaks about. She tells us in the text, so now all of you to tell that we all of you want you to know that what it is to be a half-breed in this country. Please note that she uses the word half-breed as a moment of protest, of subversion of understanding what it actually means to be half-breed within the Canadian context. The next text is a narrative by Janet Armstrong. It is called Slash. It's a novel published in 1984. It's a narrative which goes through the character of the protagonist of the text and the name of the novel Slash. Slash is a man. When Janet Armstrong wrote this text, it was assumed that this would be a feminist text. So she was criticized into why she wrote a text about a man when she was dealing with feminism. Janet Armstrong's understanding was, it is important and imperative for the men in the community to understand the contribution of women and to understand their presence within the community, their role in the community in order to attain native solidarity. And which is why this becomes such an important text. It tells us, Slash tells us about the history of the American Indian movement. It tells us about uh, the processes of assimilation, the processes of identity formation. It gives us an idea of the 1960s America. And, and I'm using the word America consciously because I'm speaking of North America here, where you go into the inroads of Canada and the United States and you understand that these boundaries are political boundaries which have no inkling to indigenous history. The next text that we talk about is In the Shadow of Evil by Beatrice Mosena. This is a text which deals with again a foster child and her sister and it speaks about this main character called Christine who is a Methi woman who struggles to deal with her identity, her sense, her life with her children, with her child and her husband, and also how to understand that this life is almost plagued by the presence of her foster parent, her evil foster parent. And she tries to understand the ghosts from her past, the events of her past. All this is brought out in this book, which has a surprising and a wonderful conclusion. The next text that I deal with is Lee Maracle's I Am Woman, A Native Perspective on Sociology and Feminism. 
Limerickle, as I said, is one of the most powerful writers emerging from Indigenous Canada today. This book, I Am Woman, is a feminist phrase days. It deals with photographs, it deals with journal entries, it deals with pictures, it deals with newspaper clippings. It's a beautiful book which deals with theory coming from oratory. It says about, it speaks about contemporary Native women sharing memories and articulating these memories in the way in which Native history has been articulated within Canadian mainstream studies as well as within Indigenous histories. This is a text which provokes us to rethink our understanding of aesthetics and politics in the Indigenous context. Honor the Sun is a text by Ruby Slipperjack. It deals with this young girl called Owl who spends her life in a pristine neighborhood, in a pristine village in northern Ontario. The book is in the form of a seasonal cycle of diaries written by Owl herself beginning in the summer of 1962. It speaks of her carefree childhood, the warmth of her family, the warmth of her people, and it is humorous events from her childhood. One notes in these texts that there is this humor, this sense of family that becomes so crucial to our understanding. As a 16-year-old, finally, Owl has to leave her community for further schooling. She returns for a summer visit and realizes that despite all the changes, despite the alienation, her mother's words will always be with her. Honor the sun, child, just as it comes over the horizon. Honor the sun, that it may bless you. Come another day. So what we see is that we are dealing with texts written by authors like Janet Armstrong, Lee Maracle, Beatrice Mosionia, Ruby Slipperjack, among others. We are speaking of a Canada which is in many ways seen as a vast land of opportunity or a physical landscape of stupendous beauty. However, what we don't realize is that Canada is also a nation, a nation which has had its own stories of racism, its own stories of discrimination, its own stories of fortitude. And this is where this becomes so crucial to our understanding of Canadian literature. In summation, we can say that there are these authors. Janet Armstrong is important in terms of her contribution to the community, in terms of her creativity, her ability to speak about Native writers, ability to encourage Native writers to convey their creativity through the Enoquin School makes her a significant contribution. She is also important because she is a powerful visual artist and she tried to encourage writing because she felt that this would convey more to different people. Her first book, Slash, not only marks the trajectory of the direction in which Native history went from the 1960s onward, it also speaks of the conversation that Native writers are engaged in today. It speaks about the politics of sovereignty, discrimination and understanding. It speaks of a community, of a family torn apart by a system which refuses to understand them, of a young man with a promising future who does not know what it holds for him. It speaks about different perspectives of understanding the self. It speaks about how you look into the idea of the self how do you look into the idea of the other through the perspective of Slash. Slash is, is a typical example of a native person born within a very well entrenched native community, a sense of warmth and family, which he finds very different from the school that he is forced to go to, the residential schooling system. And there he finds complete alienation from his culture, from his language disempowerment. This leads to his sense of alienation and a moving away from home. Eventually, Slash will return home. Slash will return home, find his love, find his affection, and at the same time, he will understand what it is to be a native person. That is why Slash, the first novel, Canadian novel, written by a native person, 
is such a canonical marker even today. So the next author that we are talking about is Lee Maracle. We have spoken about Lee Maracle, but in conclusion, I would like to draw attention to a few points. One is Lee Maracle first began with writing a text which was called Bobby Lee Indian Rebel. This kind of projected the Indian movement, American Indian movement during the time. It was an as told to autobiography and it was written in 1975. It was a significant contribution, but Maracle has moved much further since then. Her contributions are in terms of oratory and the written language. She speaks in terms of her understanding of how do you contribute to the written through an oral culture. A wonderful storyteller herself, she is significant in her understanding of the art of storytelling and how stories can be empowering. Why is this important? Because stories have often led to an understanding of history, which is unofficial history, but which is just as relevant and as understanding to your realization of what native culture has been. Therefore, Maracle's contribution is in terms of her understanding of creating a different sense of aesthetics, which deals with understanding native literature and native people from their own perspective. The third aspect that is most important, and we've talked about this before, this is just in conclusion, this is Beatrice Mosenia. Beatrice Mosenia is a Métis writer, just like Maria Campbell is, another writer that we have spoken about. Both these Métis writers, Métis as means part European, part Native Canadian. These writers have contributed to your understanding of belongingness, of what it means to belong to a community, to a people, to a sense of home. They have dealt with the idea of what it is to be foster children or to be left or deprived by a community. They have also dealt with the notion of how to regain a sense of agency, a sense of understanding, despite the discrimination. The other writer that we have spoken about is Ruby Slipper Jack. Ruby Slipper Jack is one of the most profound writers that we talk about, who speaks and breathes in the notion of the Canadian landscape within our myths. He's, she's important because she speaks about the connection with nature, with your understanding of nature and of the Canadian landscape. Therefore, why are these indigenous writers important? What is it that is important for us today to know about them? One understands of Canada as a white nation. One understands of Canada as a nation without a sense of history, without a sense of it's a Canadian nation that is new. However, indigenous people tell us that this nation is not new. This nation is a nation which is much, very much here and of now. And therefore, it becomes important for us to understand Canada in terms of indigenous people. Indigenous people ensure us that identity comes from a long sense of history, a long sense of post-colonialism, a long sense of pre-colonialism. It also leads us to an understanding that post-colonialism and pre-colonialization might themselves be problematic terms. And therefore, these people speak about a sense of identity which lets us to rethink a multicultural Canada, a Canada which is very different and very, very unique in its sense of forging a new identity. So, um, we, I would also like you all to look at certain useful links from Canadian studies, Canadian literatures, which would help you all in your understanding of Indigenous Canadian studies. Besides that, I would like to summarize the whole section that we studied. We have looked into the idea of Indigenous studies in Canada. We have dealt with the Canadian novel, Indigenous Canadian novel and prose writings. We have dealt with certain authors, certain women writers who have made a significant contribution to the area. The authors that we have discussed are Janet Armstrong, Lee Maracle, Beatrice Mosenia, Ruby Slipperjack. We have looked into certain significant novels by these authors and how they have contributed 
to the idea of the Canadian novel within Indigenous studies. We have also looked into how these authors are interconnected with each other, how they have helped into understanding the over of Canadian studies. We have also developed an understanding of Canadian literature per se, an understanding of Canadian culture within Native Canadian studies. We hope this would be useful to you for future research purposes. Thank you.